them, of course, it's Christmas Eve, and you can't, so I appreciate all those people that are out, especially as probably you folks at home have a better location here in this weather. Um, but I appreciate that, for everyone being here tonight on these unusual circumstances, and hopefully next year it will be different. You know, I do want to, to share some things here tonight. I was thinking about this very, very different Christmas Eve that we have this year. With people watching from their living rooms, and I was trying to think, what do we have in common? That we might have a hand, that you might have at home, that we might have here. And one item that came to my mind was the nativity scene. So many of us have a set of these figures on display in our house, or some of us even out in our yards. Or you may have a, a tree ornament, or a child's Sunday school project that's been brought home and put proudly on display, depicting a manger scene, at least with Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. So what I'd like to do is I'm uh, taking advantage, turning uh, lemons into lemonade, I'm gonna try to share my screen on on Zoom here, so everybody can see. And if this works, we'll be in luck. Because I'm still getting to know this. And we'll share my screen here. And there we are. That's, so that should work. As we gather on the Zoom night special. I will uh, try to share some things here. And uh, if you notice, this is a picture of the nativity on the, on the front lawn of our church. Those wooden figures that are out there. Here is a picture of that life-size crash that's down in downtown Pittsburgh, uh, right by the steel building, across the street from First Lutheran Church. And here's a picture I got off Facebook of the living nativity at Mars United Presbyterian Church that so many of our folks participated in. Nativities, nativity scenes are popular all around the world. In India, this is one from India, from Bangladesh, Cambodia, Here's a, a nativity scene from China, and this one is from the Maasai in Kenya, in Africa. And of course, here's a photo of the olive wood set that we have right in the narthex of our church. And Emma took our uh, baby Jesus back and put him in the, uh, the larger nativity scene we have in our greeting area. For me, for me, the nativity always brings back memories of childhood. My brother and I each had our own manger set. One on each side of the tree. There was my brother's side of the tree, and there was my side of the tree. Sort of like a line down the middle. And when my brother had his over there, I had mine. And though they were slightly different, one of the things about the nativity scenes were that I had something that was the same as my big brother had. And that made me feel good. It was also, I believe, I can't remember really well, but I think it was the only Christmas decoration in the whole house that I was allowed to touch. During the week that our tree was up and the decorations out, I spent time playing with those little statues as if they were action figures. And years later, with kids of our own, I was disappointed to find out that in all the booths that my mom made, at some point she had disposed of those nativity sets. So we ended up buying a new set for our children. And just a couple weeks ago, Scarlett, my granddaughter, well, my, all three of my daughter's kids were over, and um, but Scarlett, the oldest, set up that ceramic nativity set in our living room. And there it is. Now I found it interesting that Scarlett ended up putting the Holy Family off to the side instead of center, like you always see. And for some reason, she put the cow up in the halo. 
But that's the neat thing about children and the major figures that they look at and they, they set them up and even play with the figures like I did. The story that we share tonight of Jesus coming comes alive to them. And whether or not they just look at the sets or whether or not they get to play with them, the story is there for them to imagine. And that's what I thought I'd do this evening, to share this story using these familiar pieces of the nativity set as a springboard into discussing and sharing the birth of our Savior and those people that surrounded that special kingdom. So, of course, the story begins with shepherds, right? So, that's the shepherd from my set. I always identified more with the shepherds when I was a kid, because they looked more like me, and, and often one of the figures is a little boy. And they look like everyday people, like me. And of course, they got to be with animals, which I really liked as a kid. Shepherds in a field far away from Imperial Rome and Caesar Augustus. The religious authorities in Jerusalem were also far away, and so were the rich and the powerful. Instead, it's among these common people, everyday folk, that those in the power, those in power, not even look sideways at, right? That's where the good news is revealed, that the good news is first heard, and even more. After hearing that news, what do they do? They, they go and see, and they make known what they've been told them about this child and return to the regular routine of their lives, glorifying and praising God. See, these common, everyday folks are the first evangelists. They're not religious types. They're just regular folks. They're the good news tellers, though. And it was life-changing for them. As they returned to their everyday labors and the realities of life, they proclaimed the glory of God and praised God. How do you think it changed their whole outlook on their life, caring for sheep and menial labor? Likewise, we are sent from worship back into the, the work of day world. May we carry the glory and praise of God into our everyday lives and be those good news tellers of God among us. And that message came out by an angel. The angel in my set when I was a kid had a twisted wire stuck in her back. It had to be hooked on a hook on the stable. And we don't know what angels really look like. The Bible doesn't really tell us. They're messengers of God. The word angel means messenger. But, but we grew up with this winged figure as a representation hanging always a little crooked off the stable. The message of the angels is to the shepherds. Not some broadcast out on cable TV or broadband that the shepherds just happen to tune into, but specifically for the shepherds in that field that night. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. To you not to some vague, general, generic reference, but a Savior is born to you. You, the average guy in the field, for you, for all like you in the world. Good news of great joy is for you. We too should, could certainly use some good news of great joy in these pandemic times. Know also that that good news is for you. A Savior has been born. Come upon us. God has broken into the world in a new way that has changed everything. And that promise is for you. And then there's, of course, the Holy Family. The shepherds went to Bethlehem and found Mary, Joseph, and the infant Jesus. Mary and Joe. Examples of trust and faithfulness, right? Of a willingness to step forward into faith in a new way, in a very difficult way. 
And they stepped forward in faith without having all the information. Right? They had Gabriel visited Mary. Joe had a dream we, we hear in Matthew. But they didn't have all the facts. They didn't know what they were getting into. But they stepped ahead without having all the plans laid out in black and white. Mary let God's will be done. Joseph accepted her and, they, and the baby. To trust the Lord no matter what. To follow wherever God led as they participated in God's work for the sake of God's people. I saw on Facebook a depiction of the Holy Family that's maybe a more realistic rendering. It shows them sprawled out, resting with a baby, resting on the breast of Mary, with them exhausted from travel and childbirth. Can we see in their example a path to our own open participation in God's work in uncertain time? Can we too treasure in our hearts the words of hope that we hear this night. And then, of course, there's the animals. Animals in the barn. They're always part of a, of a complete major activity set, right? Even though they're not mentioned in the Bible anywhere. They're not in Scripture. They don't talk about all the animals. We have these wonderful hymns like Away in the Manger and all that about the lowing of the cows. Really, they're not in the Bible. But it was always a favorite of mine as a child. I got to play with the little toy animals. And I remember when we ended up buying a donkey. Because my set didn't have a donkey originally. So at one point, it was a great adventure, an important purchase when we bought a donkey one year. The animals remind us of the humble and simple start of our Lord's life. Not in a castle with livestock, or I, I'm not in a castle but with livestock. But it also reminds us of how in Scripture it talks of all creation celebrating with joy. There's places in the Old Testament and in the Psalms of, of the trees rejoicing in the mountains, expressing gladness. All of, joy, of creation expressing joy at the coming, the breaking in of the Lord. And how in Romans, Paul writes, how all of creation groans in labor pains as it waits redemption. A reminder that we wait for a new creation. And then there's the wise men, right? Now they're not in our story tonight. They're not in Luke's gospel at all, actually. They're not officially part of the Christmas story. We don't really talk to them, talk about them until Epiphany. We're not really supposed to. That's the church rules. But I include them tonight because they're part of every nativity scene. And they're also worth an honorable mention, I think. Because the wise men were important to me as a child. They were travelers and adventurers. I mean, when I played with these figures, they had to cross long distances. They, they had to climb the sofa mountain. And they had to cross great open spaces of carpet to reach that stable under the Christmas tree. And these folks were different than me. They were exotic looking. Their clothing was fancy. And they had these strange looking packages that they carried. And they had a camel. They had a camel. The camel, in my set as a child, had been added sometime because it was, a, it was plastic rather than ceramic like the rest of the set, but, but that camel was there. The Magi were probably astrologers, and they worshipped different gods. You really know nothing about their beliefs, only that they were drawn to worship and honor this child guided by a star. And in many nativity scenes, including the one I had as a child and the one that I purchased one of the Magi has different skin. He's black. Looking back on all that as a child, I think that was an important part of that set when I was a kid because I saw a person of different color 
included in the breaking in of God's peace and salvation for all, because that was something normative, it seemed, and, and not unusual that this person that was different was part of this. He was just a figure that I played with each year. A statement that even back in the 1960s that he was included. As we hear in Titus, the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all. God's love, a Savior, born for you, also includes them. Folks far and wide of different beliefs and different cultures. And then, of course, there's Jesus, the Christ child. The center, of course, of our celebration tonight. God made flesh, God with us in a very tangible, touchable way, a baby. Little baby hands and baby toes and picked up that baby smell. God entering the world to be among God's people, to live, to experience all we do. To share God's love in the ministry of compassion and that in love he gave himself for us. And it begins here. Born fully human. And that means dirty diapers, spit out, sleepless nights and all. Everything a new parent has dealt with. A baby, vulnerable, fragile, dependent on these parents that have been chosen for the task. A Lord, a King, born among God's people for the saving of God's people. Now I ask you, if you happen to have one out there in Zoom land, aim your camera at your nativity scene that you might have. If you can, if it's movable, if you have a phone or whatever, or a portable laptop or something, move it and aim it at your nativity scene if you can. All right. Our nativity sets sit in our homes, and they're admired for their beauty. But this Christmas, may you see in each of those very familiar figures a representation of how God has come into the world for you and for all, and calls us in so many different ways to proclaim with all that are gathered in celebration that God has indeed come among us. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world of God. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let the church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world of rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing, peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring 